Bum, bum, bum. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the sound test room. I'm just going to get on my live stream and see who's here. And if you can hear me okay and everything else and uh, have uh, what have you. Yes, yes. So, yes. Well, so today we're taking a look at uh, Retro uh, Retronym's tabletop app from way back in the day. So this has been out for, I mean, actually years and years. This was one of the first <clears throat> door kind of apps, although it's like a closed environment <clears throat> thing. So who's here? Okay, so Steven Sai Rustic uh, is a classic. <laughs> it is. It's a classic, a total classic. You can see me in the screen reflecting. Hello, everybody. Hey, Dean, hi. So, I mean, you know, I still think that... Um, a tabletop has some merit. I have a deep affection for tabletop. Uh, it can be a little bit, a little bit strange, a little bit glitchy these days. You know, it hasn't been updated for a while. I kind of wish Retronyms had um, maybe expanded this or made it a bit more. I've got my um, mousey thing here as well, so you can see what's going on better. So you get, I mean, it, if I've got, I mean, I bought this when it first came out with all its bits and pieces and everything and all the rest. I wanted to learn this, but never, they never added the Ableton link. No, but you can build some great loops and things and you can also do some real neat stuff with it now. I mean, it's got loads and loads of stuff now, even though it, it hasn't, it's kind of like, well, I, I don't know if they've abandoned it or not, but they haven't updated it in a while. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Open the default session, this is what you get. You get an eight-channel mixer and a Mr. Row, which is your main output. That has to be there. Uh, this, I wonder if it works with, well, this is iPad OS, Marcus. This is iPad OS 13.1 point, whatever it is, two. That, that's the latest update thing, anyway. So, yes, it's still, it's still, um, yeah, I mean, it's great, isn't it? I take tabletop. So, Here's, here's the thing. It handles MIDI in a strange way, I think, but they, it doesn't really matter. I've got my little key step hooked up. Some things aren't working these days. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get MIDI to work with... Um, oh, thanks, Carl. Um, this is years old. This is right. right. Okay, so here, the, at the top here, let me just engage my mouse thing. There we go. These are the important bits here. This is where you add your devices. So if we open that, You'll see my devices here. And let's go all the way to the top. I do not have the wedge. That's a piece of hardware that they developed. I do, I've do. i reloaded Phase 84 Strike. A Kai MPC. It used to have support for... If I go to the device store, it used to have support for IMPC Pro, which I do own. However, if I click on this now, because IMPC Pro is no longer supported anywhere it doesn't exist basically on the app store not for the not for the latest their os's anyway it'll just hang on the screen like we're saying retry and i can't I've, i'll have to close the app so that doesn't make however it does have the original akai impc so what else do we get here we get we've got artoria i profit let me do this with my finger it's better we've got artoria i profit which i reload the gridlock comes with it rs3 comes with it rs4 Thousand is an IAP. There are lots of IAPs in this, but the base app is free. It comes with an MR, an M8 RX, a T T303, XOX drummer, drum deranger, which is epic. And then it comes with a couple of different types of mixer. I don't use the X fade or the X2 splitter. I do use the Goblin, which is this one, and I do use the MX4 FX because it allows you to send and retain. Comes with a nice reverb, the boom room, a dead beat, which is cool, and then it's some basic stuff, an EQ and echo, filter, low pass, but different types of filters, glitch board, which is cool, crush effect, various other things, some mastering effects, a turntable, which is nice if you want to do some sort of DJ stuff and things like that. A mic for input and recording your vocals and or audio in kind of thing, and a recorder as well, which will record the mix if you want to and things like that. Then it has some cool interrap audio stuff. Again, something I never really use, but Signal is an interrap audio recorder. Mastermind is an interrap audio controller, and InterFX is an interrap audio effects unit. So 
Let's start by adding an old I Akai IMPC. So we'll stick it here. Now, as soon as I let go of this, it will automatically route to channel one, okay? So when we want to start adding effects and stuff, there is cool ways to do that as well, let's stay changed. But for now, if we open up the IMPC, we've got this, and this is the original one, so it's pretty cool, I, I like it. Doesn't come with a load of programs, but you know, who cares, doesn't really matter. Uh, it comes with some nice, nice kits. If not a bit loud, let me just uh, sort my volume out a little bit there. So, yes, yes. <clears throat> so we pick a kit, we a kind of a kit we like. Let's go with something like, um, where's this? What's this? We've got, uh, so, there's one I quite like, which is an electro, I think is it electro one? Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, what's this all about? Well, this is old. Well, th this is from 2014. Rusty Clay <laughs> likes this app, but many people loved it. Loads of people loved it. Lots of people didn't like it, but you know. Okay. Well, I'll leave it on that kit. Now you'll see across the top here, this will, def if I press play, you'll see it'll count along and it'll do two bars, okay? It defaults to two bars. You can't change this yet. Not unless I add a triggerator. The triggerator is possibly one of the best things ever for, for your like um, um, transport control and adding different loops and things. Can it load external drum sets? Well, if it, <laughs> not really, not really, <laughs> Marcus, it's old. It's old, it's old and ye ancient. Unless you can load drum sets into this, you can sample all sorts of cool stuff in. If you watch some of the Retronoms videos on it, it's it, it's quite it's quite involved. But I haven't used it for a long time. Honestly, I started messing with this a couple of hours ago, and I thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to give this a blast. So if I record this now, we can engage our click, and it'll just start straight away. Okay. I want to record a kick over those four, four bar, uh, two bars, you can see it cancels. So I'll, I'll hit record and I'll, I'll just do it when it next comes round. Four, one, two, three, we go. And it's done, turn the click off. And I was a bit off there, so I wonder if my, I wonder what my quantize is set on, let's have a look. If I go into if I go into this little gear icon next to it, it says sequence. See if we can we can do sequence and it's got a grid sequence. So you can see I was off there. And if I go into my little gear icon, I'm just wondering what my quantize use uh, to quantize use IMPC's time correct. Okay, so that's time correct there. And it was quantized to 16 notes. I'll do this. Uh, eight notes and go fix track. I don't know if that's what have fixed my yeah, I could it's fixed it for me. So, okay, now let's go into our levels here. Now it's levels. I want to uh, have for, for no, I don't want that. Hang on. See, I'm not really that clued up with actually. Um, this in itself, the actual app, but well, hey, you know, from that. Okay, so I'm, I'm quite happy with that anyway, it doesn't matter, it's corrected my mistake. Um, I wonder if I can, how I get actually back off this, this page now. You see, some things might not work as well these days, but uh, I'm not sure how to actually get, ah, uh, wait, there it was. Electro one here. What's that then? Right. Um, I'm not sure how to control the actual volume on each thing, but doesn't matter. I can go to my mixer and turn the volume down a little bit on that. Right. Okay, so that'll do. 
Um, oh, I've forgotten all about audio copy. Uh, yeah, well it, well, it works. This works. Audio copy works in this. Works okay. Need to have time correct enabled in order to contrast. Yeah, that's... you. That's. I know. I've, I've just sussed that out, Sam. <laughs> it's all good fun, people. But let's say we want to add an effect. No, I'll tell you what. Let me add another thing. I quite like the grid lock thing as well. Which is which is quite cool. I'll stick that there. So you you kind of limited. You you can run out of space quite quickly, but you know there are other ways you can sort of deal with it. Now this what's nice about grid lock is it has two channel outputs, so you can have half of them affected by one type of effect and then another half you know. So let's try and choose a different kind of, what's this glitch factory? So hang on. Now on this instrument, because it's a tabletop instrument, if we have a look in the actual gears here, you can see that the quantize is there for us and it'll quantize to 16th notes. So that's, that's absolutely fine for this. And quantize is on, so we'll just start that off again. It gives you a counting as well, but we don't need to worry about that. Um, Okay, now at this point you can add, it one, if you fill up a mixer, you can add more mixers and there's another type of mixer you can use as well. But <clears throat> and also once stuff's on there, you can just move it around out the way. Now say for instance, we wanna <clears throat> have a look at our routing as well. If we engage this and hold any particular output, like for instance, this one, we can see that it is going to input uh, two there the grid lock is and i think i might have just taken it off so we'll just put it back in like that and, right so you can reroute stuff any any way you like right and that's not the coolest thing if i wanted to add an effect now let's say uh let's go back and have a look what effects we could add um I'll, like right okay i'll add this reverb this boom room let's put it in there like this if I want to add that effect to this, I can do it a couple of ways. At the moment, it will just automatically send it into another mixer channel. You don't want the reverb just going into a mixer channel anyway, so you'd have to take that out. But you can see like any effect works. There are a couple of ways to do this. And the, the coolest way is the second way I'll show you, but you can do it the normal way. You can route the effect into grid lock, you know, the output of grid lock into the impact of the effect and then the output of the effect <clears throat> back into the mixer there's a much better way to do that um if we take this out for now by binning it like this let's open another one from scratch here so let's just pick this one up. and if i drop it on top of grid lock like that it will automatically route the effect through grid lock for us so we don't need to worry about it we don't need to worry about the routing for the effect. And it also works with the other mixer I'll show you as well, which is very, very, very cool beans. Um, you, I deleted this app a long time ago. Didn't say any point in keeping it on my iPad. Well, it's it's not gonna it's not used very much these days, is it, Sam? It's it it's 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 old, and there are other other better things. But I, you know, like anything retro, is kind of nice to mess with every now and then. I think. I had a lot of fun with, with Tabletop when it first came out. It was an enjoyable app to mess with. Anyway, I digress. Now, theoretically, we should have our reverb routed to our, our clap thing there we have. So we can have a look at the reverb itself. That's high quality. And you'll see that because this is the latest iPad, we're not even touching the CPU yet. Okay, 
so let's add some keyboards <coughs> to play around with before I add anything else in. <coughs> but you can see it's good fun, right? It's a, it's a, it's an enjoyable thing to mess around with just for fun. It's not all about making songs and tracks that are going to do anything. Flipping heck, I'd, 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 it's just more more messing around and having, 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 having a blast than anything else, I think. Anyway, this is, uh, on the positive side, this is the only way to use multiple instances of iMini and iProfit. Again, that's true as well. It, it was kind of like almost a, a precursor of using tabletop and their instruments was kind of like a precursor of AUV3. It did allow you to use um, like I, I, whatever it is, iMini up here somewhere, I guess. And instruments. It did use allow you to use. You could use as many as you like. I did a video when Phase eighty four came out, and don't forget Phase eighty four. Just they're into rap audio apps, you know. I did one using nine of them, and it was pretty good. And that was on an older iPad as well, obviously from a long time ago. Anyway, I'm going to add one of the. I'm going to add an RS three polyphonic keyboard. I shall put it there. Now, I could add another RS3 and it would only take up one blick, block of me nine squares sort of thing. And you can see it's automatically rooted there. So I, 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 I would like to put a delay on there as well. So we'll go down and find our echo, echo here, echo. But I've got to, I, I should, and just drop it on there. And again, it'll just automatically route it through to the mixer for us. We don't have to kind of worry about doing all that kind of other kind of Root and stuff. I mean, it's easy enough to root, but it just it's time consuming, you know. <clears throat> so let's tap on this here, and we've got a. Let's sync it up to the beat as well. okay and i'll take the wet mix down a little bit more and the feedback <clears throat> okay so the thing with the midi if we want to load the sound there's not a lot of controls in this by the way you've got a you've got an adsr a tactic to sustain and release and that's about and a pitch but we're not hooked up the thing with the mini here uh, you've got this little gear here but this was only for the quantize and then you've got the sequencer where you could draw notes in the grid like that, like any normal kind of MIDI editor thing. If we tap the little gear icon here, it says MIDI Learn. Oh, you've got your global BPM there as well and all the rest of it. And it me record counting is switched on to give me one. Uh, no thumbs down, yeah. No, <laughs> flipping neck. Maybe it's all gone all nostalgic, you know. <laughs> it, it clearly hasn't advanced beyond Neanderthal. <laughs> Let's go. Not that this is Neanderthal. Let's go MIDI lane and, and everything lights up. So we've got a controller we can, all we need to do is touch any part of any thing like this. I'll do, I'll, I'll do it again. MIDI lane, touch the keyboard and then play the Artoria or just touch it and you'll see the little tick appears. Now here's the weird thing which I will show you. So we'll hit done for that. And let's load the different sounds. So we hit load. I'm spitting all over the screen here, sorry. And you get like, uh, you get you do get a few sounds, quite a few actually. And we'll we'll have this one as a bass. What's this aggro bass? Not sure I like the actual delay on that sound. So we'll try something else. Maybe what's this ambipad? Oh, I've gone beyond its range. So I think the only range on the RS3 is the keyboard range. So, you know what I mean? So 
So that's fine. So we'll do that. We'll use that sound. Unless I can quickly find something else that's even better than that. I like that better. I'll record that because that sounds quite nice with the delay and that's quite a nice sound so to record right I'm already midi up so we'll put our click on all no actually we don't need it do we? we've got our drums going I can have a practice before I record So if I hit record now, I'll get a, I'll get a, I'll put me, I don't need me click, I'll get counting. Actually, do you know what? I, I do need me click to hear the blinking counting for the kickoff, don't I? Right. Oh, God. Here we go. Right, okay, so now we've got that. Uh... We've got that sort of little little pattern going. I I think the thing the thing is well is, is save it save it as as much as you can. I'm not going to bother doing that now, but you know you if you want to save it, you you just session and you'll go save and close and it'll close it and you can rename it and I could call this uh, uh, video demo done and it'll and then we can. <clears throat> load it back in now that's okay right so we've we've we, we've done that but we want to be adding more stuff and we want to be really changing this pattern out a bit so what i'm going to do now is open me things again i want to show you there's all sorts of cool effects i'll show you before we go as well it's just such such fun bit such fun does anybody watch miranda the U the uk comedy with miranda hart such fun everybody <laughs> such fun right wanted to go here and add triggerator or t101 triggerator <clears throat> this is a piece of genius this thing is so i'm going to open triggerator and you'll see now along the top lots of things have changed this doesn't need to connect to anything it works in the background it's your pattern sequencer basically now what if we open triggerator now you'll see that we've got a a point zero, which is is a zero, two bars, right? And loop is on. That's important. Not at the moment because there's nothing. If I had loop off, it wouldn't make any difference. But as soon as I start, let's. If I duplicate this here, like let me duplicate. So that's duplicated those two bars, and watch what happens now. It'll jump between those two bars. But say, for instance, I want to work on just this one here. I need to switch loop on so it won't jump around. Now, where it says trigger and select, you will not become logical until you build something with more, more of these added sort of thing. And you see, you get a lot of them. And you can have these as like as many bars as you want to. It, we, it doesn't need to be two bars. You can add blank ones. If I just add one in, that's going to be blank. I never duplicated it. And you can see we can add bars here. Oh, I'm adding bars to the one I've already done. to take that back down to two. We can add as many bars. I don't know how many bars we can have, actually, but it's quite a lot. 32, which is plenty. Or we can go from one bar, so it would be just a fill. So we will, for now, just leave that at one bar. And there's nothing in it. Look, if I play that now, there's nothing there. Nothing there. The click. Nothing there. 
there's an important thing to remember with if you're going to mess around with tabletop is that if you've got record switched on, every single knob you touch will record people. And at the moment, it's set to record on the loop. If you have it set on table, it, it, it affects the whole session sort of thing. Anyway, let's go back to this. Make sure loop is on. Cool beans. Let's go back to our history now. Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at our sequence. All right, that's fine. So I'm going to record, um, and that has a lot of potential. Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to, probably won't going to bother now updating it, I don't suppose, because they do all that, like, audio share stuff, sample packs and things like that. It's a shame, really, because it is a lot of fun, although it's kind of, it's kind of like, a, it's, you know, it's a central heat and radiator type system where it's all kind of locked into itself. There are ways... To expand this, they did do the interrap audio thing, so they, it could be incredible. I know it's absolutely amazing, but anyway, there you go. So I'm just going to record some some hi hats in bull now, and we shall do our time correct thing and have it. You know, we can leave it on 16. So that's absolutely fine. I'm going to uh, hit record. And let it play. Epic stuff. Now, here's the, here's the thing to remember, right? I've just recorded all that fanning around I've just done with that because the recorder is switched on and it's it's so annoying. You Honestly, I'm not kidding. If you start twiddling stuff, like I'm not kidding. Ev absolutely everything is automatable in this. The, everything you touch will just automate. It will just record its information. Let's go to the sequence and see what I did. Now I've got it, what, all right, or even with that, <laughs> right, hang on. Okay, so let's add, let's add something else. I'm quite happy with that as it is. But now the key thing to just, let's have a quick look at this, right? Let's switch off our loop and listen to how it sounds. And don't forget it will after it's two bars. And then it'll go into the blank one and it'll go back. So if you, you want to be on you want to be on the looped one you're working on. Right. So let's go to our completely blank one. Hey, how's it? Oh fashion related again. Yes, yes. <laughs> Never mind, it's not a problem. No, no. Okay, so let's close this. Let's add something else. Now you can see, you get, you can kind of see, can't you? You kind of get to fill this up pretty quick. But it doesn't really matter because you can do an awful lot with what you have. I mean, we've still got loads of space we can mess with as well. So that's cool. Right, yo, let's see. So let's go to our thing. Now I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm going to add something else let's go back to our instruments here and see what we've got that we can mess around with now i'm not going to add an artory i could add an i mini but i'm not going to do that because 
it just it just it won't it won't let me MIDI up for some weird reason. I can play it on screen keyboard, but it will not let me MIDI me me keyboard. And it's the only one that doesn't. Right, so I'm gonna add another IMPC here. So then this is what was nice, you see. And it'll route it automatically into the mixer, which I shall leave unaffected sort of thing, other than this one, because this is going through um, one of the effects, isn't it? I think, I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's not important. So we can... Let's pick something a bit more fun than that, eh? Let's pick a, a kalimba two. Yeah, that might be fun. So do, I'm on A2. I'm on this bar, A2, which is blank. So turn the click on so we can hear it. I know that there is uh, only going to be one bar because I've got it set to one bar from my bar point here. I can change the label so I could rename this bar to fill. I, I don't know. We'll call it fill one. Like that. Dink. And that's now called fill one. So we can keep an eye on what we're doing uh, as the way we go. And that, that is a good idea. Okay, but what I will do for starters, I'll stop that. I will duplicate this now. So it will duplicate to the right of whatever you've hit. However, you can move them anywhere you want to, sort of thing, like this, sorry. Oh, you, you, wait a minute, wait a second, can I? Like that, yeah. So I'll put it back there. Like this. So, play. <coughs> so I'll go back to my thing. So you could do all sorts of neat stuff, like moving the stuff around on the thing <coughs> inside its own sort of system. Sort of thing. We'll go on to that. Now you've got instant bar, beat, block. These are basically just the way it triggers when it's in trigger mode. And then you have select mode as well. Neither in or there really, just different ways of playing the actual blocks. But while we're in loop mode, You can do all sorts of cool stuff like that. Anyway, let's get back to our fill. So we want to put some sort of fill in there. And I said I was going to use this particular kalimba thing. That'll do it. One, two, three, four. Hang on, two. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we've got that, like this, as a fill. It's terrible, I know, right? But how, oh, I love the Compton Twins as well. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it does. Flipping out, I'll get stuck with the copyright stick on you. <coughs> so now in this one here, we've got that fill. Okay, so let's duplicate this again here and let's move it uh so let's uh, i've tripl oh that's fine that's duplicated to the what if i wanted to move it back i could move it between but that's fine so i'll just duplicate it again actually um so now if we go back and i just wanted to show you this before i get into some of the, the very very cool effects before we go sort of thing so it's just it's just the beans so i just wanted to show you how you could build a basic kind of thing so let's switch loop off Okay, so now we should have our little pattern going sort of thing, and then you'll get an idea of just how powerful Trigger 8 is. Absolutely, absolutely awesome. Now, when loop is off and you're just playing it, this instant beat bar block means it doesn't do, it's, n it's not necessary. You don't need to worry about it, okay? Just that when loop is on, if you've got Trigger on, and you've got play. It's just different ways of playing the blocks, but let's switch loop off. And it'll play along our sequence.
That's weird. Let me delete that and delete that one. Play this one. I'm going to duplicate that one. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to duplicate it again. I wonder if I... I wonder if I duplicated a blank, a blank pattern. Uh, I've seen two of the albums. Oh, Thompson Twins. Uh, Thompson Twins are epic, man. Tom Bailey, genius, man. Genius. Right, here we go. Let's try that again, shall we? Let's, let's go back to the beginning. cooking on gas now that's how it works right so let's go back to our view so that's what we've managed to create with that so you could build up patterns change things out add more stuff in right but let's have a look at some of the other cool effects and things you can do so let it because it's good fun this is and this is the kind of thing that you'd like dean this is the kind of stuff that you would absolutely absolutely love let's go back to session let's save and close that and that's fine Let's open, I, uh, let's, no, that's rubbish that is. Let's just start a new session, it's easier. And let's, I'm going to just let me quickly build up some mad stuff here, okay? So I need to, I'll put an, an IMPC in. I'm just going to quickly, quickly build up, uh, quickly build up some, some, some stuff. Let me just get a. Okay, that'll do. No, I want drums. Um, drums, 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 drums. Drums, 8 bit, 8 bit, 8. What's this? 808, man. Okay, that'll do. So, right. Here we go. Clicks on. And remember, it'll default to two bars. No trigger rated there. One, two, three, four. And again, because this is the thing, I need to set the time correct up. So let's just go into sequence. Let's just um, bring like this. What's the select all thing? Select all and delete. And go back and set time correct to 16th notes. Actually, we'll just set it on eights. Make it even better. So there we go again. We'll go, we'll start. Oh, fuck me. Do you know, I'm, I'm not kidding. Mm. That was it. Seriously. Oh. That'll do. That, that, that's it. Epic. Stop recording a minute. Fixed track. Quickly add something else. This is, this isn't going to take long, and this is this is where you'll 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 see. This is this is very this is good good cool fun, good cool fun, good fun people, good fun. So let's use uh, I don't know. Let's use the eye profit. Hey, eh? that hasn't that hasn't seen a lighted day for a while, has it? Uh, and hopefully, hopefully midi lane will work. I think it did. It did it. Oh, it's a bit off, isn't it? Look, right, right, cool. Done. It's important that I play something that goes over a, a wide range of uh, a wide range of notes here <clears throat> for some of the stuff I want to show you. So get a better sound than that. Eve. Why not? Um, oh, that's nice. 
Okay. <clears throat> nice set play. going to do I'm going to show you some of the neat effects that, that that you can do that comes with that kind of comes with it with some of their stuff so you've got this cue board right cue board is nice and this is the kind of thing that Dean had, had, had enjoyed playing with so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop cue board onto the main output so Pick cue board up and drop it right over Mr. O, the output. And it will root cue board into the output. Now, what I'll do for now as well also is just move that mixer down and I'll move the cue board up there. What's going to happen? Let me open this. It's not, if we play it, nothing. But what's going to happen is as soon as I hit record here, it's now waiting to listen, right? Oh, yeah, it's on the main output now, this keyboard is, yeah. What's going to happen now is it's going to wait till it hears the output, okay? So if I play this now, but we'll just record that sequence in quarter note lengths across here. It's cool. You won't hear any difference, but you'll watch it track along. Okay, so here we go. So uh, I've got it recorded. See? And then it'll stop when it gets to here. The music will carry on, but that will stop. Okay, so what you've got now is... So wherever I play it from... Now, it can get a bit mind-boggling and annoying. So if we put it onto chop mode here, like that, now we've got... And if we put it onto 1.8... Or 1.16th even. Now, what gets fun now, right is if I play the sequence, the normal sequence, with it set on one quarter, it'll play the same. If I set it on one eight, and then put it back to Q mode, <laughs> it just speeds it up. Right, okay, so that it, that's, that's one of the cool effects. The cue board is neat. You do not have to put the cue board on the main output. You could put the cue board on the IMPC. You could put it onto the... It doesn't really matter. Let's just move it out of the way for now. <clears throat> and let's have a look at another 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 cool effect, people, that they put in as well. Was also, if we go further... I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can quickly show you. Now, you've got like your... That's a tone matrix. It makes noise. Uh, it's different sounds. It's melodic kind of things. The TT303 is kind of self-explanatory is it is like what it is like a, uh, a, a, a you know a what's it you can program in like your thing i don't know why we can't hear it but never mind um let's get rid of that then and also i'm sure it works but if if we put this where is it now when we go down to further mechanisms turntable um, glitch board, glitch board, not cue board, glitch board now. If we put glitch board, we'll pick glitch board, but we'll put that on the entire output as well. So it'll route it through the output. Glitch board is nice because it, it does exactly what it says. If you open it up, 
you've got quote a sixteenth, and then you've got some filter in here. So if we play our ridiculous little sequence. <laughs> So you can do some, you can do some top banana stuff. It's 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 good fun. So what other cool stuff do you get? Uh, let, let me show you the mastermind. Signal records audio in and onto thing. But if we go to mastermind and put that over there, <clears throat> this is an interapp audio player. Okay, so. We just select an app. Oh, it's funny actually that when Retronyms were doing first doing this, and they, there wasn't that many interapp audio apps. You know, everything was new at the time. But uh, now you've got all, everything. You know. But let's see. I mean, I, all these are all these are still interapp audio. If we open select Cube for instance, it opens it, and then Cube is selected. So what what kind of happens now is. We can go to Cube and have a look like this, and you see it's got the interrap audio thingy bar. We could select a different sound. Let's go back to what's it? If we if we record our if we record that now into our little sequence. Now we've got tabletop playing. Um, now we've got tabletop playing cube, <laughs> which is great. You know, it's good fun in here. I, I like it. But there is another way. There is another way you can do this. You can record the information from cube as an audio file into tabletop with their other app. But you can't do them at the same time. So you'd have to go to cube and play it, and then record it into Signal, which is an interapp audio record a player kind of thing it listens to the audio and records it as a as, as audio sort of thing but it will record you know other stuff as well obviously so what else well that's pretty much it really other than all the other bits and you've got a, a, a mic input thing you've got a main kind of recorder uh let me see uh what's it to show you one more i think oh yeah 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 D listen Deadbeat, I'll show you Deadbeat. So I'll do that as well. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put Deadbeat onto directly on top of um, the IMPC. Uh, the, uh, not the IMPC. This is cool. This is a cool effect. They did. I mean, you see what they did? They they made some really great things to work inside their system. It's really nice. And it was. it's a real shame. It, it, but I mean, I guess they thought, well, you know, People may want more, but it's still got a community, I tell you, that, that's still uploading stuff to their, their cloud system. Anyway, let's play our little sequence. Go to our mix. That was that chromatic pitch thing I did on thingy. Uh, I profit, and you see, sig the signal's listening, but there's nothing. There's nothing going to be coming to it, so you can take it out. And what's even cooler? see how it reacts to the beat sort of thing but what's nice about this is if i re i can record that as well. this is the thing you everything records <laughs> a 
it's quite good fun. Okay, so, so there you go. I want to show you w w another one more thing before we go because I've gone on for 50 minutes playing with it, but I do find it really enjoyable. I just find it's just good fun. They should, they should, they really should, Dean, because it's just epic in it, you know what I mean? It's just, it's such fun, people, such fun. It is. I mean, even using just their built-in instruments, it's great. It's just, you, you can have such a good time with tabletop, even if it's not important stuff, but you can build up some absolutely massive, massive sessions, though. So say you wanted to build up some massive drum sessions and do all this kind of cool, cool effect and stuff. Right. I will show you one more thing, and it will probably be easier if I... So I'll save and close that. And we'll just hit plus here and start off a default. Um, this... Let's take this out. This is the default mixer that loads with each default session. Let's take it out the way. Let's open our thing and have a look at uh, other mixers that we've got here that we can play with. So there's our instruments. <clears throat> uh, that's a, oh, drum, I'll, sh I'll show you this drum derange is good as well. Now it's going to just, all it's going to do now is going to route to the output of the output. So I don't want that. So I'm going to take that out. Um, I'm just going to disconnect it sort of thing. I'll show you this mixer, right? So the, the Goblin MX4, MX4 FX one. These are four, there's four channel mixers, right? Now you can route as many of these, you can chain them together as you would normally expect, right? But the cool thing about this is, the MX4 is that it has, it has sends and returns. So it has send A, send B. So you could have like, uh, which I'll show you, I'll, you can have uh, like a, 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 a reverb and a delay, you know, the usual suspects kind of thing. So let's connect up our XOX drum machine to ding, our drum deranger, I should say, which is very, very powerful. But our drum deranger, let's connect that up. So we hit our little connection box and it shows you the, all the green outputs. It outputs. So we'll take our, our main output here and it'll show you the inputs and we shall put it into our input there so master output there but you can see you can output track one you can output track two it's where it works nice the drum deranger but we'll just take the master output and we'll drop it into input one so let me show you that with the mouse where it's gone we'll take master uh, master output from drum deranger oops and we'll drop it into input one of the mixer and it just automatically roots and then it will reroute um the output of here look it'll reroute the output of the mixer into mr automatically for you sorry it's cool now i've just disconnected it haven't i so let's reconnect Ding. like that okay so let's have a look at the actual drum deranger this is this is cool you can, like you can have as many of these as you run there's lots and lots of kits okay so if we if we tap on our kit here load You'll see they've included a ton of a ton of kits with this. And let's put in at the moment you'll see so we're on tr tr track one. Now we have four tracks, okay? So we have the opportunity to use up to four drums. So we've got a kick here. So let's put a kick in there as normal four on the floor kick. And then we have distort. But we, we can alter all these, sorry. We can alter all those independently. And then we have like a pitch. Cool, right? And then you have different patterns as well. This is pattern two, so you could then set up a different kind of kick pattern for pattern two. And this will all remember what you're doing inside your, you know, your, your trigger rater type thing. Right, anyway, so let's...
So let's do something else. Let's like so we've got low track track two. Let's change our track select. So we've got track two, three, four, five. Oh, you can go up. Look. Oh, we've got more tracks. So one, two, uh, res kick, zap kick, blip, squib. Track two, track eight. Track two, I'm going to load a different sample and I'm going to have some, uh, I don't know. These are different, different things you can put in. I don't know. Let's try this. So we'll load that into track two. <clears throat> and we shall place, we shall make sure that our level is kind of turned down a bit, I think. And then we shall put those in like this. So playing it now. So we've got like a a little we've we've sorted out a container for a bit. We've sorted out a little drum pattern. Let put let's put low. So let's just quickly drop on a reverb. So we'll put a reverb on there now. Okay. And this is what I mean about having this as a send and retain on this particular mixer plug-in kind of thing. Is if we go to our um, effects here and we place in this, this know, let's put in one of their, theirs in. Let's put in the, uh, you can put the glitch board in if you wanted to. That might be a bit mad. Let's take this very reverb and drop it right over the mixer. It will automatically root the ins and out for you. Okay, so if we I play it now, and I'm guessing it's going to have rooted it into channel A. Into send A sort of thing. <clears throat> and then you've got send to return. So if you put something else into channel 2 of the mixer now, you've got control over the reverb level without having to add an actual reverb and use up a slot for the um for the mixer uh, for the for the sign of your, your kind of grid sort of thing you know it's nice it's nice it's a bit of a glitch isn't it there a couple of blank spots but well, ain't good <clears throat> but you know like i said it's it's uh, uh you know it, i kind of it, they've kind of forgotten about it a little bit now but at least it still works on ios 13 <laughs> which is quite remarkable really and as long as they even just don't keep updating it so it works, that's nice. But yeah, cool cool beans, I thought. But there's so much cool stuff you can do. I mean, really, really clever, clever stuff. Some people are just absolutely awesome with this thing, you know. And if you look at, like, uh, the, the demo sessions that you get, some of them are, are really involved. And, of, of course, back in the day, remember that... It was really difficult to get this to work at full bore in the old days because of the CPU limitations. Of course, now it just doesn't, it just don't matter. You could run the whole thing full out and still not even touch your, your iPad's uh, CPU usage thing. Listen, guys, anyway, thank you very, very much for joining me this evening. To have a look at, uh, have a, have a, have another blast with the old uh, table topage, and since we've got quite a one going on on this one, but um, yeah, I mean, good stuff. It's good stuff, people. Anyway, if you hi Dave, if you haven't already stuck that like, strike it now, please. There's 32 people watching. Please strike the like before you go, guys. And if you're not a patron already, please consider becoming one. <laughs> Uh, from as little as a dollar a month, is it really, really helps. Righty-ho, I shall see you all later. Well, I don't know what we'll be doing tomorrow, but I really enjoyed playing with Tabletop again. I, I really did. I had, a, I had a blast with it today. It was good fun. Right. Anyway, who knows what Who knows what tomorrow will bring, folks. And uh, But anyway, I hope you can join me again tomorrow evening, uh, or if, I, if I'm streaming tomorrow evening, that is, of course. Um, but, uh, oh, Colin, hello. Uh, how are you doing, my friend? Did you enjoy Prog Weekend? Your Prog Weekend? 
Oh, we got what we're doing. We're gonna so since the live streams, oh, you're welcome, Walt, Steve, and everybody, Cy, Dean, Mark, Ozzy. Um, we're doing a, is it Sally Caster 2? This is Sally Caster 2, isn't it? Sally Caster 2, the revenge. Yes, yes, that will be Thursday night at nine o'clock. All right, guys, top job, cool beans. Doug here from the sound test room, <laughs> over and out. <laughs>